Hi everyone, this is the husband from Texas Roadrunners. Today we're going to install a composting toilet in our EgoCap 1165. I've already done a little bit of the steps. Um, if, you, if you can't manage these steps, you probably don't want to attempt the installation yourself anyways. So the first thing I did was remove the toilet. And on that, all you do is, is there's two nuts. On the stud, you unscrew those, and you disconnect the water line here. And that's all there is to that. And then that lifts right off. So if I just take and cut a nice straight line, all this is is just for looks to cover up the hole. And if I need to reuse it, I'll be able to. Because it'll just sit like this. They put a little silicone on the wall to hold it in place. You can't see it. It's been cut, so it's still usable. So that's good. That one wasn't doing much. That one wasn't either. Got a little carried away with the install, I think. And that one wasn't doing anything either. So those three were useless. I cut the flange on one end with a hacksaw blade. And I had to take it out of the saw. And then I took my pliers and I bent this up. And then I was able to get it out from around the flange, which is glued onto the pipe. To replace this flange, they make a two-piece. And you put one under this side, and then the other one slides under that side, and then you screw it down, and then you can put your bolts in. So that'll, that'll all be fine if I ever need to install the old toilet. They make a plug for this pipe. This one happens to be a 4-inch flange, and they make a plug for that. But I couldn't find one at the store. So I have a, a hole saw, which cut about a 4 and a quarter inch piece of foam. So I'm just going to stick this foam in here. And this is actually, it being a little bit bigger is good because it's a nice tight fit. Now when I, we used this tank the last time we used it, I flushed it, then I completely filled it with fresh water and flushed it again. I've had my vent stack open, and you'll see that here in a bit, for a week, and there's no smell in the RV, so my tank just has a little bit of clean gray water in it. I also, I had some vinyl flooring that I had installed, so I cut a piece of that. I don't know if I'll be able to leave that or not because it may cause the toilet to rock. But I'll just leave that on top of this. That flange left this, you know, this black gook on the vinyl flooring. And I just took a piece of it on the on the vinyl flooring and just kept working it like that, you know, when it pulled up the gook, that sealer. That was probably pretty bad. So we have the flange flush with the floor. We have a cover over the vinyl. We've got the foam in. The composting toilet calls for you to put two mounting tabs in the floor. And I'm not going to use the mounting tabs. We don't use it currently. It just sits there. It sits there fine. The only issue you have is when you go to pull up and to take out the urine tank, the toilet can lift up on you. Uh, it hasn't been a problem for us. And I want the ability to have some movement in here with the, t with the toilet. So I don't want to mount it solid. Um, if we figure out, you know, later we need to mount it solid, we always can. It's just 
two screws to a bracket and then the brackets attach with wing nuts because you have to remove the toilet to empty the compost part. I found the half inch plug that I need, it screwed right in. I put a little Teflon tape around it, uh, screwed it in. I've had my water valve on now for a few minutes. So this is all pressurized and I have no leak. So this looks good to store. On the composting toilet, we chose the nature's head. We did a lot of research and the nature's head looked like the best. We just weren't, weren't sure. And different ones work for different reasons. The nature's head one is really compact. Uh, it's less than 20 wide by 20 deep. I want to say it's about 18 by 18, but I'm not positive. The nature's head is very simple. Uh, you basically, to hook it up, you need 12 volts going to a fan. And then the fan runs all the time. And all the fan does is pull air from in one side and then out the other side. And it goes out this hose. And this hose needs to vent to the outside. And that's all there is to it. So on ours... I had to figure out how to vent this to the outside. I'm in a truck camper. The unit is completely enclosed. So even the tanks are enclosed. And they're not like on a RV, you know, they're enclosed with a piece of plastic, basically, uh, corrugated plastic. And that's it. This unit, it's solid. You would have to drill a hole through the siding, through the floor, or something. I decided uh, pretty quick that I wanted to try to vent the hose out through the vent stack that already existed. But I pulled off the TV access panel to get to the wiring and the vent stack is in here. And I thought, well, if I can figure out how to get in that vent stack, well, I could cut it, cut a section out and try to put a T in there and vent into the T <clears throat> and I thought about it for a while and it's like man that's might not be so easy I'll probably have to undo the roof I'm not exactly sure how I'm gonna do that and then I thought about I I've done quite a bit of plumbing in the past and I had some parts left over from plumbing I did it on the homestead and one of the parts I had was this adapter and it's just a standard one inch adapter that's, you know, that you put a fitting in and like on my water pump uses one inch. So I'd screw this fitting in so I could put pipe in, the pipe in for my water pump. So what I did was I measured these threads with a set of vernier calipers. Don't measure the outside, I measured the inside of the threads. So say this is an inch and a quarter, you know, the insides would be maybe inch and an eighth. And then I found a hole saw that measured out perfect. And the hole saw, this hole saw actually is an inch and a quarter. So I took the hole saw and I just drilled the hole right through the pipe with that hole saw. And then because the hole was smaller than my, my threads, I was able just to thread this right into the pipe. So I'm just gonna put some Teflon on there and then go ahead and thread that in. I put my Teflon tape on here and all that is is just to try to abate any smell. Again, that tank isn't gonna be used. And the smell from the composting toilet basically smells like dirt. So that isn't gonna be a problem. Another thing about the regular flush toilet is once that thing starts getting about half full, if you've got the fans open or the AC on, these vent stacks, it'll pull air from these vent stacks and you'll get sewer air in your camper and it's horrible. And there's really, I, I don't know much you can do about it. Now using the, um, 
using the composting toilet, you know, all that's going to go away. We're not going to have any issues with that. If it pulls a little dirt smell in here, that's going to be a heck of a lot nicer than that black tank, I can promise you. In order to put the hose in, in the wall, all I did was I got my hose, my raw end, and then I found a hole saw that just slips over the end. And, and this one here is probably, well, this one's two inch. That'll give me just a little extra wiggle room to get the hose in and out. And it was also the closest fit I had. So now I'm going to just drill a two inch hole with my hole saw here. That's not what you want to hear. My water pump bled. So please be right here. on that it looks like it's gonna fit the problem with these campers is you can measure all day long but this stuff isn't like a house you know you're not 16 on center your pipe isn't go straight down it goes at an angle this way an angle this way you know something's always out of whack so you have to try to just do the best you can and hope that it works We slipped the hose down the wall, fished it out right here. It's going to plug into the toilet. Now we need 12 volt power and then we'll be good to go. But that's, that's what it looks like. I got my hose installed up here, my vent. So I'm going to vent right to the outside. When you're in here, you can see a little hose down there. No big deal. I'm going to run 12 volt power out that same line. I just have to hook it up. There's not really much I can show you all on that. I'm going to pull 12 volts from inside that wall somewhere. So that's, that's pretty much it. Um, the old one's removed. This is how the new one will sit. I can use it in the house or in the RV, whichever one I want. Y'all take care. We'll catch up with you quick.